Hi, and welcome to lesson three here in our compounds unit. Here we're going to talk about molecular shape. In lesson two, we talked about how to draw structures, but now that we know how to do that, we have to understand the kinds of things that we're actually representing. Up here, I've got examples of the major shapes that you're responsible for in our course. Let's go in and talk about what these shapes are, how we describe them, and how to represent them. It's important to understand that molecules are three-dimensional structures. This can be problematic because we're generally representing them in two dimensions. So it's really easy to be deceived. For instance, this is a methane molecule. And if I wanted to represent this, I would normally represent it in this flat two dimensional shape, which basically removes the notion of three dimensions from our overall conception. It's really important to kind of keep that in your head that even though we're drawing things in two dimensions all the time, we're really representing three dimensional structures. So I'm gonna need you to kind of put on your three dimension imagination goggles as we go into this discussion. The way that shape is determined uses what's called VSEPR or valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. This is how we take a structure and figure out its overall shape. In order to do this, you're going to look at the bonds that the central atom is making and the electron pairs that it has access to. This chart actually shows pretty much all of the shapes that you could possibly have in a simple molecule with one central atom. And this chart is actually given to you on honors reference table E in your honors reference table. So you'll always have access to this. In order to use this chart, you're going to need to do a couple of things. The first thing that you're going to need to do is draw the Lewis structure. Once you have a valid structure, you're going to need to look at the central atom and count the number of electron density regions around it. That's every lone pair and every single bond, every double bond and every triple bond. Each one of those would count as one region. Once you know that, you're going to actually use the chart in order to figure out the overall shape. So for instance, right at the top, if I have one central atom that's made two bonds and it has no lone pairs on it, that's what we'd call a linear molecule. We're going to go in and talk about the major ones that you'll commonly see, but it is important to understand that you do need to be able to use this chart to figure out all of the structures that are on it if you're given a Lewis structure for a particular molecule. Our first common shape is the linear shape. This would just be three atoms arranged in a straight line. Carbon dioxide is a good example of this. Here's carbon dioxide's Lewis structure. The general formula for a linear molecule would be AX2, where X is really any atoms that A, the central atom, is bonded to. And since this is a straight line, the angle between these bonds is going to be 180 degrees. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, write down any questions you have before we move on. Our next common shape is the bent shape. These would be three atoms arranged in an obtuse angle. Water's a good example of this. Here's water's Lewis structure. I hope you can see why we represent water with the hydrogens usually on the left and at the bottom instead of on both sides. It's really to evoke this notion that water is a bent molecule. Bent molecules are going to have the general formula AX2 with a lone pair of electrons on that central atom or AX2 with two lone pairs of electrons on that central atom. In either case, the molecule is going to be bent. When there's only one lone pair on the central atom, the bond angle between the two X atoms is going to be 120 degrees. When there are two lone pairs, like water, the bond angle between the two X atoms, in this case the two hydrogens, is actually going to be less, or what we say much less, than 109 degrees. So even though the bond angles are different, the two molecules have a similar enough shape that they're both generally referred to as a bent structure. Does this make sense? If you have any questions about bent molecules, now would be a good time to write them down before we move on. Our next common shape is what's called the trigonal planar shape. In a trigonal planar shape, you're going to have three atoms arranged around a central atom at equal angles. Our example is our nitrate polyatomic ion. This is what the polyatomic ion's Lewis structure looks like. I did not draw the resonance structures for the purpose of this discussion. A trigonal planar structure is always going to have the general formula AX3. Our central atom is going to make three bonds to three different atoms, and there's going to be no lone pairs of electrons on that central atom. Since all of these bonds exist in the same plane, and we're talking about a 360 degree rotation around the central atom, the bond angle between any two adjacent X atoms is going to be 120 degrees. Do you have any questions about trigonal planar structure? Write them down if you do before we move on to our next structure. Common shape number four is the trigonal pyramidal structure. This is when you have three atoms and one electron pair arranged around a central atom. A good example of this is ammonia. Here's the Lewis structure for ammonia. A trigonal pyramidal molecule is always going to have the general formula AX3 with one lone pair of electrons on that central atom as well. Because there is that lone pair, it now pushes the three atoms into a pyramid-like shape, which is where this gets its name from. 
the bond angle between any two atoms in a trigonal pyramidal molecule is listed as less than 109 to signify that it's not 109, but it's also a little bit larger than the much less than 109 we saw in our bent molecules with two electron pairs. Do you have any questions about trigonal pyramidal shapes? If you do, now would be a good time to write them down before we move on. Let's touch on the difference between trigonal planar and trigonal pyramidal shapes a little bit more in depth. The difference is somewhat subtle, but it's due to that presence of the lone pair on the pyramidal molecule. So what I've shown for you here are representations of a trigonal planar molecule, boron trifluoride, and a trigonal pyramidal molecule, ammonia. You can see by looking at them straight on that you actually can't really tell a difference. But if we rotate these molecules so that we have the central atom in the middle, you can see that in the pyramidal molecule, that central atom is actually at a higher elevation, quote unquote, than the three atoms that is bonded to. Whereas in a trigonal planar molecule, they're all in the same plane. That has to do with the presence of that lone pair of electrons on the central atom in the pyramidal molecule, which is why we get this characteristic pyramid shape instead of a flattening of all of the atoms into the same plane like we see in a planar molecule. Our last common shape is the tetrahedral shape. This is any time we have four atoms arranged at equal angles around a central atom. This is going to be a three-dimensional arrangement, even though we're always going to represent it like we do when we do methane. This is methane's space-filling diagram. You can see that the atoms are clearly arranged in three dimensions. But when we represent it in two dimensions, you lose that clarity. It's a good idea to get it in your head that even though it looks like this, it is not actually like this. Tetrahedral molecules will always have the general formula AX4, and the bond angle between any two adjacent bonded atoms is going to be 109 degrees. Do you have any questions about tetrahedral molecules? If you do, take a moment and write them down before we move on. There are certainly other shapes as well. I can't stress that enough. And that's why I'm giving you a chart, which is honors reference table E. You should be able to use this chart in order to figure out the shape of any covalent molecule where there's one central atom. For instance, if we were talking about a molecule with a central atom that's making six bonds to other atoms, you should be able to use this chart to figure out that we're talking about an octahedrally shaped molecule. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, write down any questions you have before we wrap up. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of molecular shape. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure you can identify the shapes of simple covalent molecules based on their Lewis structures. Also make sure that you can describe similarities and differences among the shapes discussed in this presentation. Finally, make sure that you can use the Vesper chart in your honors reference tables in order to be able to determine the shapes of molecules when you're expected to. If you can do each of those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them in the comments below the video or get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.